So Johnny, um, what goes into the decision-making process as to make, making the decision about how many franchises you're going to, or how many stores you're going to onboard? Like, I think you have some, you probably have some goals about how many stores you want. Like, how do you make the decision to say, okay, no, I want one store additional this year or five stores or 10 stores. Like, what are the, like maybe the economics or the decision-making, like it seems incredible. Like your business is such a very different business than mine is. It's right. right. Like it's like, I can't even imagine how to even go about testing whether or not it's the right thing to do to expand. Like, how do you make those decisions? So, um, at the beginning of the stage, uh, at the beginning, we, uh, we had a meeting with my cousins and, um, shareholder agreement we did all that and we decided that we want to grow 10 stores a year which give us 100 store for the next 10 years and that's our goal but i think we were too naive uh in terms of quantity and not quality so now after a year and a half of operating our stores we we decided to not worry about the quantity but more about the quality because sometimes you can acquire a business that's um doing very good uh let's just say one store doing very good and then you can buy uh three stores doing the same as one store so quantity is not really doesn't mean anything so we decided to go with quality and right now um anything scalable for us you know we cannot just go to nevada and open one store we cannot go to miami and open one store we look at the cluster of uh stores restaurants and even more we look at uh of people who's going to manage those stores who's going to take over on, on that market do we have the right people and uh is that the right market for us and is it scalable we don't just want to acquire a market without being able to scale it and uh, uh serve the community the way it should be served so so johnny let me ask you this when you said you, you want quality what makes what are some of the factors that goes into making one store be a quality store and one store, you know, then you have three of them that do, that do the same numbers as that one. What are some of the factors that play there? So sometimes you, you, you buy off potential, uh, a business that's doing average and you know, you can, uh, bump it up and increase it. Maybe they, maybe they have bad customer service. Maybe they have, uh, bad sales, maybe they have uh, not enough training, maybe they don't have the culture, maybe uh, there's theft, we don't know. Um, what makes the decision of a good or bad store is in any business, the, the bottom line. Uh, so is this bottom line worth our investment to go to a new market, invest in new people, having a, a team, new HR, new laws, uh, everything changes, right? So because we're not just in one state, we're in different states. So anytime we go to a different state, we have to learn all those new laws, all those new uh, job-related uh, uh, decisions or laws that we have to adapt to. It's a, it's a huge, huge decision. But we look at the bottom line, we look at the return on investment, and we look at uh, the potential. So do you, do you find yourself in a situation where like you let's say you meet a, a, a person who wants to sell their store mm -hmm. and and you can tell the owner is a no person or that person if if you had if you ask them that question that you talked about earlier they're like a three right right can you automatically go into that meeting and be like all right this person is a no person which clearly means that their customer their culture is not going to be is not going to be strong Correct. which therefore means the massive opportunity that you're buying is the ability to revamp the culture. You then revamp the culture and now you're going to get, I'm making it up 25% more sales or hundred percent more sales. Is it that simple? Like, have you developed that feel? Like, how do you know when you go into a meeting, like, okay, this is a win, this is a loss. So it's, it's know your enemy, right? Um, it, it's not enemy in, a, in, in, in a, that sort, but it's knowing the store and knowing what you do. Uh, you know, if you want to be successful in anything you do, you have to love what you do and know exactly what you do. Uh, a lot of people try different things, but that's a different topic. Uh, first, I visit the stores uh, because uh, the lesson uh, and an image of the management, right? So you can see the feed, you can, you can actually know what you can or cannot do better. Uh, 
So before I meet the person, I'd rather walk, meet them at their location. So I know the vibe, I know, I know how things are uh, happening. And I, I, I can see uh, people knowledge and I can see the people reacting to, to the management being there and I can see all that stuff in front of me. And that gives me the better knowledge to, to negotiate. I mean, we don't negotiate on potential because I'm not buying potential. I am making the potential. So that's a value that I'm gonna add in the future. We're not talking about this. Uh, I don't go to a meeting and tell them, hey, this is what I can do. Therefore, that's how much I'm gonna be paying. No, I look at the fact that they already have. I look at the numbers. I look at the bottom line. The potential I have, it's good for me. And then I negotiate off that and, and you know, make things a little bit sound more dangerous than it seems. Like, oh, this is happening. And, you know, you always got to have something to negotiate. Thank you for listening to this episode of the LA Business Podcast. If you like what we're doing on this podcast, please consider subscribing on Apple or Google Play, leaving a five-star review, and sharing with your friends. If you have any questions, comments, or recommendations for a guest you'd like to hear on this podcast, please email me, robert at brillmedia.co. Thank you. Have a fantastic day.